found my bracelet. What bracelet is that? This is a bracelet Becky and Steven, my brother and sister-in-law, got me from Hawaii like a million years ago. How do you still have that? I don't, well, it fell in a drawer. <laughs> fell in a drawer and that kept it safe from me until I found it again. I mean, we literally lose receipts walking from the store to the car and you still have that thing I after all these years? I found a bracelet. Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 117. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy ketos. ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome. If you're new here, say hi down below. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews and we talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, when we sit down on a couch for Keto on the Couch, we just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is 2 And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. I don't know what we're going to talk about in this Keto on the Couch. It's kind of been a boring week for us. Well, I mean, we had to play catch up yes. because we were gone the first part of the week for Memorial Day and barbecuing and family get togethers. And so it's like we hit the ground running on Wednesday and it feels like it should only be Thursday, but it's Saturday. Yeah, we got home like Wednesday afternoon and then it was like right to Boom. do videos, get cutting done, get church stuff done. So... I can't believe like the week is over already. But let's get back to Memorial Day because we had a great weekend. We discovered a park. I mean, a park that we knew about, but we've never been camping there. And it's just five miles away from our house. And we've now discovered the perfect way to have a family get together. And that is at a park away from your house. Yes. So you don't have to dirty up your house. It was really fun. So we, we went Sunday and then like everybody came over, like Anthony and Caleb and Sarah and John Paul and his wife, Michelle and Rachel's mom and Becky and the kids, everybody came over and we basically had a Memorial Day barbecue, not at home. No, it was at the campsite and there was plenty of stuff to do. It was really nice. I, you know, we have an awning that provided the perfect yeah. amount of shade because I think that's the only thing that spoils barbecues for me this time of year is if it's too hot. Right. Like then I can't enjoy it, especially if you've got open flame barbecue going and then you're boiling yeah i can't do that and i mean it, we actually had more shade there than we do at home because we had the awning out we had our screen house up and then i just cooked everything on the blackstone and it was perfect we had hot dogs hamburgers and chicken breast like it was plain enough. and simple and everybody ate lots of food and it was just a lot of fun well it's interesting too that if you go away from home i feel like you're required to bring less food nobody expects for you to have 20 varieties of side dishes and entree options if you're at a park barbecuing. Like right. if we're home, I feel like there's pressure. Do I have enough appetizers? Do I have enough different entree selections? This was like, we did all the grilling and yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah. Eat, eat another hot dog. Right? And it led right into our June challenge, right? Because yeah. we were camping and our June challenge is called Camp Crazy. Yeah, and it's all about, you know, movies and taking inspiration from some of the movies we grew up watching that have a scouting or camping theme. So yeah, it felt really good to just start out June outside. Yeah, now if you haven't seen it, go check out the video where we just kind of talk about what the Camp Crazy challenge is. I'm gonna leave a link for it right up over Rachel's head. But it's pretty much just, it's a movie theme and we're just watching various summertime movies and then kind of duplicating the movements that are within the movie. Just kind of get yourself out. What can you do to keep yourself moving this summer? And then what we're doing is, is we're adding in a couple of live streams during the week to talk about what kind of emotions does that movie bring up? You yeah. know, a lot of us, I know myself included, we eat based on emotion and that's not a good thing. No. But if we can start to learn like, what is it that brings up those emotions? What is it that's causing us to eat in a way that's like detrimental to our health? We might be able to get a better handle on it. Like one of the things that I have learned for myself is 
I don't do well when I'm not busy or I'm bored. Like, I just don't do well. If I'm just sitting around doing nothing, I just want to eat. But if I keep going, if I'm constantly busy, then I don't even think about food. Now, it's not good to be constantly busy, so I've got to figure out, like, how do I deal with that emotion without eating something all the time. Well, and for me, I learned that actually if I'm doing something creative and I'm I'm very busy, I feel like I almost have to be eating during that that process and you know, going back to some of the movies, I've noticed recently, especially in some of these like 80s and 90s movies, when you had teenagers or young adults that were studying for tests or doing things for school, they were always surrounded by tons of food and I think that I started to associate study time, creative time as a time of just like grazing and and no boundary eating. So right. it's good to kind of like take those thoughts captive and decide, is this something I want to keep doing or is it time to change? Yeah. Now I do want to say, I know some people are having a hard time finding the movies. If you have a hard time finding the movie, then the good thing to do is go find another movie from you know your younger days, maybe your childhood, your teenage, even your young adult time, find a movie that really sparks memories, yeah. like a summertime movie, and watch that. And then again, duplicate some of the movements. Like that's why we picked like camp movies. When you yeah. think about like movies, even like I know we don't have it on our list because it could be a little naughty, is like the Meatballs movie. Right. Right. They're always doing some kind of an activity. So find a movie like that and, you know, just duplicate the activity in there and then start watching it for the hidden message or look for the in that movie, like what emotions is it sparking? Sometimes they could be happy memories. Sometimes they could be sad memories. And those sad memories may spark an eating emotion that you want to maybe jot down in a journal and go, okay, this triggers me. Yeah. Right? Well, and you know what else I've kind of enjoyed revisiting some of these old movies is getting back in touch with, you know, the adventurous side of childhood, mm -hmm. right? Kids don't need to be proficient in canoeing and paddle boarding and, you know, fishing to try things, right? right? There, you, You're here, it's summertime, let's try things. And I'd love to bring back that childhood spirit right. where you're like, okay, we can do this. Let's, let's stay outside and be a little adventurous. Yeah, you think about it, like kids have no fear. I remember when we were camping with the kids when they were little, Anthony climbing giant trees and then it was like we actually have a video of him like where he just he climbs up on a limb that's overhanging water that has alligators in right. it. Right. And he's yelling like, hey mommy, look at me. And we're like, um, like you're dangling over alligators, but they have no fear. I'm excited about the following weekend after we get home from you know like going camping because it's like the greatest three days of the year. Father's Day? Well, not not Father's Day. I mean, th these three days, it's better than July 4th. I I'm actually going to say Father's this is day. better than Chris. I don't care about Father's Day. I mean, Father's Day, it's just another day. It's a day made up by the greeting card companies, just like Mom's Day Be and nice Valentine's Day. Like, you know what I tell the kids? Hey, listen, you know what? I love you. Love me the other 364 right. days of the year. Father's Day, that's not the big deal. It's okay. the day after Father's Day that's what so awesome. What is the day after Father's Day? It's Amazon Prime Day. Oh my gosh. Right, so you have Father's Day, the day that dads get to relax and do absolutely nothing, and then we have Prime Day for two straight days. Is that not awesome? It's so awesome that you need to turn in all of your electronic devices because Joe is worse on Prime Day than an afternoon what do you mean I have with to, David Venable on QVC. What do you mean I have to turn in all my electronic devices? Like, otherwise you're gonna be buying stuff. Prime day is like the greatest day. That's where we got our ice cream maker. That's where we get like all of our cool gadgets and where I can get new drones and cameras. Is and... there anything you're looking for on Prime Day? No. Just shopping. You just go That's down dangerous. the list on Prime Day and be like, ooh, that looks really cool. I don't need it, but I want it. And look, it's 50% off. Oh my goodness. Now in all serious, is I do love Prime Day and Prime Day is a great day to find some of the things that you want for your keto lifestyle because again this is a lifestyle it's not a diet it's not a temporary thing so you might be looking for a new blender 
you might be looking for an ice cream compressor machine. That's when we bought ours. I mean, yeah. that thing is normally like $300. We got it on Prime Day for like 140 bucks. So you can find good deals. really, really good sales. And I think later on in the week, we're gonna actually make a video and we will be releasing that over the weekend with some of the things that you might wanna look for on Prime Day. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you hit that bell button so that you're notified when we do upload that video. But also, I'd like to know, what are you on the hunt for? Yes. So that we can be on the hunt for it also. So let us know down below, what is it that you're looking for? I know that Caleb's really hoping and praying for a PlayStation still. Yeah, good luck. I'm yeah. looking for the PlayStation it's, 5. When they said that they friend. were gonna be sold out until May and everyone's like, that's not possible. They weren't kidding. Like we're in June and you still can't get a PlayStation 5. Like well, it's insane. His friend got one, but he had to purchase this insane bundle that was like a $2,000 bundle no, in order to get it with it. It had like a, a, like a VR machine or something. And I'm like, yeah, we're not doing that. No. Now you know what else is good to be on the hunt for? What is that? Products from today's <laughs> sponsor. Perfect Keto. So we do have a sponsor for today and I'm that is this. Perfect Keto. Now if you don't know what Perfect Keto is, they are a keto nutrition company. I don't know how you don't know who they are, but if you don't, they are a keto nutrition company. We love their products. We use them on a regular basis. And Perfect Keto is a huge supporter of our channel. Thanks guys. But we do love their products, which is why we like to work with them. So some of the products they have that I personally like, they have their MCT oil powder. This is really good. I love to keep it in my car. It's like a creamer. So if we happen to be on the road and we stop at a gas station, you get coffee, you know, we're not carrying around heavy whipping cream or butter. Right. So we take a little bit of this, scoop it in there because you can just mix it in any kind of like, you know, Contigo or even with a little stick, it mixes in pretty well. We love their collagen. This is an everyday thing. Uh, the strawberry tastes like strawberry quick. The peanut yeah. butter reminds me of malted. It's and so good. We mix it with almond milk, a we little bit of water, the butter. and then yeah, and then ice cubes. Like mostly we have strawberry because we can't keep peanut butter in the house. Right. This is my new favorite, like kind of go to snack, kind of meal bar. Something that if I don't want to have a heavy meal, but I want a little something, I keep them in the freezer in the RV. With us. Because this way I don't eat them all the time in the house. And they're great for the road. They're great. You know, if you're just going out, if you're going hiking, because they aren't like super melty like some no. of the other things. Especially the peanut one is really good. And then you love their electrolytes. I probably drink this, I want to say like four to five times a week. I usually go back and forth between all the different electrolyte drinks, but I really like this one. The lemon lime especially is my favorite. And then finally, they do have exogenous ketones. Now, exogenous ketones are great for mental clarity, giving you a little bit more focus or energy. But remember, exogenous ketones are not going to help you lose any more weight. Nope. You don't need high ketones to lose weight. So there is a link down below in the description for Perfect Keto. You can also use our code 2 Ketos to get yourself a discount. And once again, we greatly appreciate you for supporting the sponsors who support Two Crazy Ketos. Yeah. So uh, we talked about Prime Day. Yes. We talked about um, pretty much what we had of the week. We have next week and coming up. Let's take a quick commercial break and then we can come back with all of our comments. Okay. You know what movie I could have added this month is The Goonies. I love that movie. I almost watched it last night. I was flipping through iTunes and all it. of our movies and I almost watched The Goonies. Because it's not a scouting movie and they're not in like a summer camp, but they feel like they're like in a camp of some sort. Well, group. those are just some of my favorite movies. Like all those movies from the 80s and 90s. Let us know down in the comments section, like what was your favorite movie from that era? But yeah. any of those movies with like Corey Haim or Corey Feldman or the Brat, Brat Pack, Pack, like, you know, Breakfast Club and 16 Candles. Pretty like, in Pink. All of those movies, like they're some of my favorite things. So anytime they pop up, I just want to watch them. Me too. Now I want to watch The Goonies. <laughs> well, let's get into our comments. We're going to start off with our Keto College adjunct professor of it. the week. Yes, I don't know why we named it such a long thing. It's but... a prestigious position. It needs a good name. <laughs> well, if you're new to our channel, this is where we like to focus on our subscribers because Keto on the Couch is all about our subscribers. We like to celebrate your wins, answer your questions, just kind of like be that support system that you may be looking for. And so we like to take this time to just go through all of the different comments. 
And every week we like to go into our Facebook family group, which there is a link down below for that. Uh, we go in there and we look for an inspirational post. And this week's post was from Jamie. Hey, Jamie. Wow. Very, very simple. No words, just a picture. 154 pounds. All of these women weigh the same. I love this because look at all those beautiful girls. Mm -hmm. All the same weight. That number, because the scale is the devil. Right. Like all of those women have different opinions of like what that number is. Like is it good or is it bad? Right. But look at them. It's all the same. Right. Like they're the same weight. I feel like it was like written right to us because you're always complaining like, hey, I don't like this yep. number. And then you compare yourself to somebody else who has that same number, but you're skinnier and... You know, you you can't look at that number, which is why we say, like, the scale is a devil. And yeah. I have the same issue. I mean, I get on that scale and I hate that number, but and sometimes I want to ignore the muscle factor. But the bottom line is, is I look at me and then I look at the rock. Guess what? He weighs more than me. Well, but I don't look like him. Well, right? exactly. So the number isn't everything. It's, it's so one dimensional. It's your body composition. It's how your clothes fitting. So thank you for that post. Yeah. It was really inspirational. Good reminder. Okay, so now we're going to have our subscriber of the week, and this is where we like to pick some people who have put up their success stories, and we ask you, if you're new to our channel, head on over to our Facebook family group. There is a link down below. It is completely free to join, mm -hmm. completely free, and leave your story because your story is going to impact yes, somebody. It will. There is somebody out there right now going... Nobody else knows what this is like. Nobody else has ever had Hashimoto's disease and done keto. Nobody else has ever had type 2 diabetes. Nobody else has had a sugar addiction. And when you put your story up, that person is going to be like, oh, I'm not by myself. I'm not by myself. I can do this. So head on over to Facebook and join it because it is completely free. And while you're over there, go ahead also and on the bottom of this video, hit the like button and <laughs> hit the subscribe button because that's free too. And it's one of the few things that are free. So oh, wow. make sure you subscribe to our channel because yeah, the amount of people who are watching our videos that aren't subscribed is staggering. And it I want to get that number up. Yeah. So let's get into this week's subscriber of the week. We actually have one and then we have an honorable mention for a long time subscriber. Okay. But the first one is my buddy, Jerry. Jerry. And I'm so proud of this. He just said, just calculated my two crazy ketos May in motion challenge. I started the month with a goal to hit just 5,000 steps a day. That's a good... By the end of the month, I was getting closer to 10,000 wow. steps. Wow. Most day I was averaging 6,000 to 8,000 steps, but I had some big walking days in there. I'm a statistics guy, so I love looking at and analyzing data. My feet were fatigued, but no blisters or cuts. That's really and good. hopefully, I can keep up this momentum into June and beyond. And take a look at this. Don't even look at this picture yet. Look at the chart Yay. on the side. Total steps for the month, 280,680. Wow. 100 and almost six miles. Um, average steps, 9,000. Average miles, 3.42. So like, awesome. That is amazing. And now... Jump over and look at that picture. Look at that, Jerry. Wearing his 2KK Meatheads tank top. I love it. Look at that weight loss. What is that? Like I love 26 his tattoo. pounds or 25 pounds. Like that is amazing. Jerry, congratulations. You so look incredible. Good. Keep inspiring everybody. Oh my gosh, you're so awesome. Now I have an honorable mention. Okay. Long time subscriber. They have been our subscriber of the week before, but this picture went up. And, you know, sometimes when you see somebody who's lost weight and they've lost it for a while, you you forget where they came from. Yeah. Like, you know, I was almost 300 pounds and people who knew me four years ago and just see me now, they're like, wow. But people who have seen me at, you know, 185 to 200 pounds for the last two years, three years. It stops being it's, a shock. It's it's old news. They forget that I was heavy. And also, sometimes you forget you were I was heavy. To, I was about to say, you forget right. where you've come from. And sometimes we need a reminder of where we came from because it's going to help us to forge forward. But it also reminds us of how much like positive you know work we've done yeah 
And so I wanted to recognize our friends, Heath and Shelly. Heath and Shelly. So Shelly put this post up and said, four years between these two with pictures to come, I barely recognize Hungry Heath Parker. He has lost over 160 wow. pounds. I've lost 50 pounds. That's Incredible. an overweight person between the two of us. I love our lifestyle and continuing on this journey, both of us are able to do more and feel so much better. Our health has drastically improved with both of us reversing out of our type 2 diabetes. And to see pictures really helps me visualize these improvements. And take yeah. a look at this picture. Wow. Look at them. Oh look my Look at gosh. Heath. Look at Shelly. Like what you guys a difference. You are shrinking. Although I do really like that Breaking Bad shirt. You guys just look amazing. So proud I'm of you. I'm so proud of you guys. Heath, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you for wearing that double extra large shirt. It does fit. <laughs> I know that you don't think it does, but it fits. And I'm telling you within the next couple of months, that thing is going to be swimming and we're going to have to send you an extra large shirt. Right. So Seriously. I'm super proud of you guys. I'm super proud of everybody in our 2KK family. Yeah. And again, if you're not a member of it, head down below. Go join our Facebook family group because there Get a is an cake now. Or <laughs> there is an awesome support system over in our 2KK family on there Facebook. There really is. Let's get into the comments. So we're going to start off with the comments from last week's YouTube channel. First one is from Parrothead Renee. Hey, Renee. And she said, just starting this video, but Rachel's headband just shouts red from Fraggle Rock. <laughs> All I hear is that theme song in my head. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so now I'm hearing the down to Fraggle Rock. Down at Fraggle Rock. I know, like the same the same thing. But yeah, I love my headband so hard. You really like those headbands. I need to find more opportunities to wear an entire set of pom-poms on my head. Not things that go too high because it's a pain to get it you in the frame. You can't get them in the frame. I'll work on it. I do want to say we did have a couple people make comments about like that we act kind of silly during our live streams and stuff like that. This is us. Like we're yeah. going to have fun. Like it's, it's too difficult to not be us. So no. like if if our joking and Rachel's wearing silly headbands, if it's not for you, we apologize. Yeah. But we're I'm gonna, gonna, gonna have fun balls. while we get the information. I'm gonna through. do things I'm gonna say things that are not cool. <laughs> Just me. Okay, next comment is from Jessica. Hey Jessica, she says one thing I heard one time was replacing I can't with I won't. Okay. It resonates with me more because it makes it easier to tackle the warped mindset if that makes sense. I don't think my brain shuts down as fast with I won't. I actually like that because it, it's it's really being It's a decision. Honest, right? Yeah. You know, when we say we can't, it's I don't want to try is really what you're saying. Like, unless you've been working at it and working at it and working at it. But again, you know, the more you work at it, the closer you're going to get. The real thing when you say to somebody, I can't do that, it's, yeah, I don't even want to try. I don't want to be embarrassed. I remember when I got on the paddle board, I looked at Rachel, we're in the keys. And I'm 50 years old and I looked at him and like, I don't think I want to do this because like, what if I fall? I'm going to embarrass myself. I, and I, I actually said to her, I don't think I can do this. And you're like, you can do this. You need to at least try to do it. Nobody cares if you fall. No. And well, but I liked how you were just talking it out because right. you need to, instead of it just being that one little thing, I can't. Okay. Why, why can't you? Right. And when you started to bring into it that it really had nothing to do with the ability. It was more about what's going to happen when I fall down, who is going to make fun of me? Right. Like the root of it was embarrassment. It had nothing to do with ability. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times we don't try things because we're afraid we're going to be embarrassed or we're just are thinking to ourselves, this is going to be too hard and right. I don't want to do something that's hard. So right. I really like that because if I say to myself, I can't stick to my meal plan, but if I say I won't still stick to my meal plan, right. now I need to now check it's your my, fault. It's my fault. I need right. to check my attitude. It, I this like isn't that. something that just happened to me. I really like that. I Thank like you. that too. Okay, next one is from The Rock Room, Phil Zuckerman. Well, hello there. Said depression is all but gone with low carb. 45 pounds lost and stable since October 2020. Wow. Thank you for your channel. Thank you so much for sharing that. The mm -hmm. more people that talk about how depression anxiety, mental illness, like all of these things are positively impacted by keto. The more people that share that, the the more people are going to give it a shot. Yeah. And that is something we're trying to start talking about more now. I think something that we've kind of neglected to talk about is like the emotional side of eating, the yeah. emotional side of keto, the mental side. And so that is something that we are trying to focus on a little bit more now. 
Okay, so next up we have Blue Dove. Hey, Blue Dove. She says, my daughter walked in and saw Rachel's headband and geeked out. OMG, what is that? I want it. Looks like I'm making an order from Hobby Lobby. I have to be on Team Rachel, though. I find I want my big meaty meal earlier and earlier these days, which is a little sad because my love language is also feed me, and now I'm having to cook for myself, trying to perfect my steak in a cast iron method. Lesson one, don't buy the cheap ghee. That is We've true. Learned that. Do not buy cheap ghee. Yeah. You know? You know, you can get away with cheap butter, but cheap ghee, because of the way it works and you're getting all those milk solids out of there. You can have a taste. Yeah, it, it definitely, like you want a good tasting ghee. Little key for the cast iron, get it super, super, super hot. And then you're just gonna two or three minutes on each side and you can actually stick it in under the broiler if you wanna finish it off a little bit more. Yeah, but it was nice that I, I, we share the same thing of wanting to eat earlier mm -hmm. versus you who tend to like to eat later. I feel like it's easier for me to cut off an eating window earlier in the day rather than later in the day. Right. Now it's funny, I was listening to a podcast from the dietdoctor.com during the week when I was working and uh, I forget the person who they were interviewing. It was a panel of people talking about high protein and uh, I'll put a link for it down below. But what was interesting, they were talking about carbohydrates mm -hmm. and like even when if you're having salads or veg and stuff like that, of what is the best time to eat it? And she was talking about really the best time to eat that kind of stuff is at night and eating the, the fattier, the lowest carbs, the high meats midday, which I would think is opposite. That yeah. you, would, you should want to eat your carbohydrates if you're going to eat any earlier in the day so that you can kind of work them off. Huh. But what she was saying is that when you wake up in the morning, that is when your insulin is like at like full rare going. Wow. That's where you're gonna release the most amount of insulin. So if you eat a bunch of carbohydrates when you wake up, now think about what we used to eat, right? I was gonna say. All the carbohydrates. You were eating muffins and bagels and cereal, like all those carbohydrates. And now you just get this like giant insulin response. Makes so sense. as the day goes on, that kind of goes down a little bit. So I thought it was interesting thinking about like, yeah, what what do I like my first meal to be? And I do, I really find that I like my first meal to be that meatier kind of meal. And if we're gonna have a salad or vegetables, that should be with dinner. Well, it's interesting because that is very flip flop of the standard American diet, right. which we say, I mean, it, it seems like there's no end to how opposite we are <laughs> in I doing know. things. Because what would you normally have for lunch? That would be when you'd have your big stinking salad that's right. like huge, right? right? Big as your head right. because it's got to get you through to dinner and then dinner have the, you know, the fattier, meatier stuff. So it's interesting to flip it. Yeah. So the next one is from Marie. Hey, Marie. Marie said, I thought I would never be able to cross my legs again. I have been able to cross them for two months and I'm loving it. So good. Also, I've been a plus size for over 20 years and I recently been fitting into a large. Good job. I also wanted to mention ketones. In the beginning, I checked them every day with glucose on my Keto Mojo. Now I only check once in a while. I've noticed that my ketones drop after exercise. I think I'm fat adapted, so I don't worry about it. Overall, I have more non-scale victories and I'm good with that. Good. Most of them are things I would never get better. I thought would never get better. Thanks for all you do. Love you guys. You're so much fun. Well, we love you too, Marie. And that is so exciting. Thank you for that beautiful variety of wins. Things like crossing your legs. Things like noting that you have more non-scale victories. Right. And that is a good thing to yeah. celebrate. That's what you want to focus on. And one thing about ketones, it is completely normal. And if you really look at it logically, that your ketones would go down after exercise. Because when you're checking your blood ketones, what you are measuring is free floating ketones, unused ketones floating around in your blood. What's gonna happen when you exercise? When you exercise, your body needs more energy. Your body will also create glucose when you exercise. Does that mean that you shouldn't exercise? No, no. you absolutely should. <laughs> it's a normal response. Your body will create glucose from fat and protein and muscle in your body if it needs it. So what happens is, is when you exercise, you're burning up whatever energy you have and now your body's like, okay, I need some energy. Right. Oh, look at all those ketones that are floating I'll around in my blood. Let me go grab those. 
Does that mean you're not in ketosis anymore? Absolutely not. If you're not eating carbohydrates, you're gonna have to be in ketosis. You're definitely going to be burning fat. You just don't have a lot of extra free floating ones in your blood. So it's completely normal. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Uh, next one is from KY Gal, which hey, I'm assuming is Kentucky Gal. Oh, I'm, I love it. I make your low fat yogurt and love it. The last batch I decided to use heavy whipping cream. Epic fail. Why? What I thought was heavy whipping cream turned out to be half and half. So in case anybody asks, don't. <laughs> okay. Um, when you say it was an epic fail. I'm curious, did you just use heavy whipping cream instead of milk? Because that won't work. Um, and that's why I put that up here. Because we, I think that the yogurt recipe is what we get the most comments and emails about. People saying, like, I don't understand why it didn't work. And I know we talked about it last week. It's it's probably super easy, like, almost too easy. Like, people are like, it can't be that easy. It is that easy. It's super easy. And if you go watch the second video we put up where we tell you how to make it low fat... We show it's even easier than the first video. I just don't want to take down the first video, but you can take everything that's in the second video, but use the ingredients from the first one. And it's literally dump everything into your pressure cooker and then stir it once or twice, hit yogurt, let it go for eight to 10 hours, and then transfer it to a yogurt strainer and then come back after a few hours and eat it. It's really that simple. So if your yogurt is like not working, Either A, you cooked the cultures, which means you brought those cultures over 185 degrees, which would kill them all. Uh, B, you could be using, if you, if you happen to be using raw milk, that won't work. You would have to actually kill all the bacteria in there first, bringing it to over 180 degrees, like pasteurizing it, because the yogurt cultures will compete with the bacteria that's in raw milk. Then the other thing that could possibly be wrong is you just don't have any live cultures. You're using either the wrong starter yogurt or the cultures that are in your yogurt are dead already. And that obviously won't work. But you need to have some sugar in your milk. So if you're using heavy whipping cream and not any milk, that won't work because there's not enough sugar in there for the cultures to actually make yogurt. We noticed this week in our own batch that you can't go more than two or three batches using your own cultures like right. that be, otherwise it starts to get sour i i would say so every the way it works is like go get like a culture and again we always recommend fahe why the bacteria that's in there those cultures are really good and they make it thicker if you go look at fahe is much thicker than a lot of the other yogurts and it's because of the cultures they're using so use that you can i what i a lot of times what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a batch and then when it's done, I make one more batch immediately. Like, I don't even add any more yogurt to it. I just, like, I scoop everything out of the pressure cooker. I now dump another, like, half gallon of milk in there and swirl it around with whatever happens to be left over in the can, you know, like, in the pressure cooker container, and then start another batch. So you're really getting two batches right there. You can make one more batch like where you take leftover yogurt that you have and then make another batch. And then every batch after that, it's gonna get tangier and tangier yeah. and tangier. So I always say like two to three batches. Beyond that, it, it's gonna get a little bit too tangy. I mean, you might like that. We yeah. personally don't want it tangy. I almost don't want it to be a yogurt taste. I like it with a sour cream taste. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Kara. Hey, Kara. She says, I was wondering if there's a cookbook or a centralized location for recipes, or do I just need to scour the YouTube channel? Thanks. Okay, so we do have on our website, we have a section that says recipes. So anything we've done a video on, as well as a couple of other ones, there's recipes on there. The recipes that Rachel actually puts up every day on Instagram and shows up on our Facebook, uh, and also it shows up on our website now yeah. on the main page. Uh, those do not have any kind of a place on our website right now. We are working on that, but that is a lot of work. Because we do it every day. Because we have one every day. We have thought about putting together some kind of a digital cookbook. We just need to find the time and also find out if anybody would even be interested in yeah. like, a cookbook. So it's something that we've played around with, but we'd have to like kind of learn how to do the digital cookbook and 
the thing that we're like really bad at is pictures. And yes. I personally don't like cookbooks that don't have pictures. So. I know. <laughs> and we make terrible pictures of our recipes. So that is something we thought about. Let us know down in the comment section if you would be interested if we came out with some kind of a digital cookbook, what kind of recipes you want in there. One thing you will notice with our recipes, we don't do a tremendous amount of desserts because we just find the desserts a lot of times kind of knock us off of like our goal. And so we kind of stick to more of like foods that we like to eat to keep us going on Savory pace. meals. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's take a quick commercial break and then we will come back with the rest of the comments. Okay. I didn't even have time to go to the bathroom. <laughs> It was too fast. Okay, next one is from Jeannie. Hey, Jeannie. Jeannie said, I remember Rachel saying in one of the videos that using heavy whipping cream gives her a little pooch. It does. I think she called it, on her body. I've been doing the keto chest shakes for about three weeks, always using heavy whipping cream. And I have to agree with her on this one. I only have a few pounds to lose, but the section right above my waistline seems to have grown and taken on a life of its own. Aww. I'm going to switch to butter or coconut butter and cream. Has anyone else noticed that something like this? It's so weird. It's heavy whipping cream. It just works a number on me and gives me a little uh, heavy whipping cream, baby. Yeah, I mean, I find with me too that like I can tolerate a little bit of heavy whipping cream and then if I have too much, it just gives me a little bloat. It goes away the next day, but it kind of makes me feel uncomfortable. And I think it just comes down to like some of us just don't handle dairy super well. And it's weird because you can have somebody who like doesn't handle dairy well, but they can handle heavy whipping cream well. And yeah. then you have people who can handle, who can handle heavy whipping cream, but they can handle butter. And then you have people who can't handle butter, but they can handle ghee. And it's all comes Everybody's down to different. how much of the milk solids are out, how much of the lactose is out. But what I would say is you might be doing heavy whipping cream because you think it's going to taste more flavorful because it's heavy whipping cream. Of course, it's going to be delicious. But it's weird. With keto chow, butter actually makes the flavor come out stronger. Yeah. So I think you're, you're doing yourself a favor, not just because of the heavy whipping cream cream baby but like i think taste wise the yeah. butter just tastes better yeah heavy whipping cream definitely adds carbs now does it make it thick and delicious yes but it does mute flavor so what we found is using butter with a little bit of xanthan gum or even a little bit of gelatin or you know even if you do like a little bit of butter and then maybe a tablespoon of heavy whipping cream and that'll kind of thicken it up without giving you all of that heavy whipping cream bloat. Right. But that's the cool thing about keto chow is you can keep kind Very of versatile. messing with it and playing with it and figuring out what works for you. Uh, next one is from Nicolette. Hey, Nicolette. Nicolette said, can I safely lose an average of a pound a day for the next 40 days? And if so, how? I just had a wonderful idea of hitting my goal weight by next anniversary and I just did the math. I'd like to lose about 40 pounds to hit the goal and anniversary is 41 days away. I guess I can get as close as possible. Okay, so the really? answer is no. Yeah, I mean, I totally understand why you would want to have that goal, but I feel like that goal is gonna set you up to feel really bad, not just over the next 41 days, to feel like you need to live in complete deprivation, but like, I think that when you don't hit it, it's gonna upset you. Yeah, the bottom line is, is it possible to lose 40 pounds in a month or 40 days? Yes, but usually that's going to occur in somebody who is like ridiculously obese, who has like a couple of hundred pounds yeah. to lose. So early on, they can drop that kind of weight. But if you've been doing this for a while, or if that's the only weight you have to lose, the chance that you're going to lose 40 pounds in 40 days is almost non-existent. You would have to be ridiculously working out and pretty much not eating, which is then going to slow down your metabolism. Yeah. So it's going to be detrimental to your health. A realistic healthy weight loss would be one to two pounds of fat a week. That's the realistic weight loss. So what I would do is focus on size because what, like Rachel said, if you set this goal of you need to lose 40 pounds and then you don't hit it, let's say you only hit half of it, at the end of 40 days, instead of being excited and celebrating the fact that you lost 20 pounds, you're gonna be like, I can't believe I hit my goal. And now that's gonna impact your future weight loss. Yeah, I would say get an outfit that you really think is beautiful 
and maybe it like it fits but maybe it's slightly snug right and then just try to look amazing in that on your anniversary yeah i think a good place to start with try to get down one size yeah well maybe two sizes two sizes would be on average what is that like 20 pounds is what they say it just depends though you know yeah. that's that's the hard part because like i can wear a size jeans that's a zero and i can wear a size pair of pants that's a four or a six so it really just depends on the cut of the outfit but i would just pick something that you would really Really like to wear don't worry even about the size and just you know stay stick strict keto until you get into the outfit yeah uh next one is from peggy hey peggy she says so today at work front desk at a gym i had a lady tell me that i look great she was telling me about her diet counting points and all the food she loves to eat still struggling to lose the weight after spending time in the gym. So I told her I was doing keto, didn't mention I've been doing carnivore for a week and a half. And her response was, oh no, that is just too restrictive to do. And I don't agree with that way of eating um, at all. All while she is sucking down her sugar loaded smoothly <laughs> that I made her, that was six points. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I we have a video on it. I'm gonna leave a link up here. And you know, people say keto is too restrictive. My personal opinion is, Keto is the least restrictive way of eating. It just, when you look at like, okay, point. She's doing the point system. We don't even have to say the name, right? She's doing the point system. I tried it. That is so restrictive and so easy to fool around with and manipulate. You know, you get free foods. These are zero points. And if you do it right, does it work? Yeah. If you look at a banana is zero points, awesome but you're supposed to have one banana. Right. But what most people, and I know I would, I've never done it because, but Don't I'm tell the me one that I have not done. If you tell me banana is zero points, that means I can eat 20 of them, right? I'm gonna right? go full monkey. Yeah. Full monkey. <laughs> Same thing with protein. You'll say like, oh, well you can eat unlimited chicken breast. Well, to a point you can, but again, the goal is you're supposed to get a little something. I like the one where you can have an egg in one plan is zero points, but another plan is a point. So I'll eat 25 eggs. Right. Right. Well, that'll work, right? Because they're unlimited. Well, and usually when people are like, this is too restrictive, what they're wanting to eat is really foods that even they know isn't adding much to their diet. Right. Like I think that people who are, who are really fighting hard for French fries, you know, you're not eating something that is adding any nutrients to your body. You're right. getting full in your stomach, but right. it's not like helping you. Right. If you eat a big plate of white rice, I don't think anybody, even pre-keto, is thinking, wow, this is really... It tastes great. You know, it tastes good, but you're not getting protein from that. You're not thinking about like all you're getting out of a cake, a piece right. of cake. Like right. I want to have a regular Because it's all emotional. It's very emotional eating and it's just not something that you're trying to get in your body because you're like, I need more nutrients. Right. It's usually just junk. Yep. Uh, next one is from Dan. Hey, Dan. Dan said, end of our first week on keto. I'm Yay. down eight pounds. Wow. And my wife is down five pounds. I haven't had much energy this week, but I know that will get better. That's so awesome. If you're a week in and you're lacking energy, most likely that is electrolytes. Beat Bump up your up. electrolytes. Try to get in about 3,500 to 4,500 milligrams of potassium a day, about 3,500 milligrams of sodium a day, and about 300 milligrams of magnesium. But if you can get that potassium up, if you can get that sodium up, that will really help with your energy. Um, as, and one of the great ways is with Zip Fizz. Zip Fizz will yeah. give you a bunch of energy too because it's got some vitamin B in there. Um, next one is from Ellen. Hey, Ellen. She says, trying to talk hubby into a Blackstone slash flat top. Pros and cons, everyone. Do you use it in addition to your grill or in place of it? I just see everyone using one and it all looks so yummy. Okay, so give me your number one pro for using a Blackstone. Well, first of all, it's I can, I've got to give you a couple. All okay. right, because I know what you're going to say first is it's outside. I That's what I figured cooking, you would say. The cooking is outside, which I love, especially in the summer months when it is super, super hot mm -hmm. inside of the house. I also like, though, easy, quick cleanup. Yes. Even if you're outside, I don't want to have a year of cleaning. Yeah. Right? So it's very, very quick. It is super easy to clean up. I mean, here's here's my list of pros for it. Timing. So that things are all cooked at so, the same time? Yeah. So number one, you get to cook outside. Number two, super easy cleanup. I mean, again, we cooked our entire Memorial Day thing on the Blackstone. And this was a smaller Blackstone. This 22-inch Blackstone. But 
I'm trying to think of how many burgers. I want to say we cooked, it was two packs, eight, 16, so 20 burgers. Yeah. A giant package of uh, sabrettes or Nathan's hot dogs. The chicken. Um, chicken breasts, everything on there. And then I remember John Paul came over because he was like, hey, I'm, I'm, I think I might want to get one of these things. Like, how easy? How does it clean up? And I'm like, watch this. Take the scraper, two scrapes, pour a little bit of water, wipe it with a rag. We're done. And now I can put it away. Yeah. As a matter of fact, somebody even on our camping channel yesterday left a comment on one of our videos like, how do you clean it before storing it? And I want to make a video over there on how to clean it because super it is easy. so versatile. Cleanup is super easy. And I never want to clean up my grill. Like I was one of those grill people that would have a grill and never clean it. Blackstone is easy. You can cook so many different things. If you ask Cauliflower me, rice, smoker or Blackstone. Pancakes. I know everyone's different. I'm going to tell you you get a Blackstone because you can cook burgers, you can cook eggs, yeah. you can cook bacon, you can make pancakes. You could, I've made ground beef on there. I've made chili on there. I mean, you could cook so much on there. I love my smoker, but I can't cook everything on it. Well, that's true. And I love, if you're not a great cook, like I am not a great cook, it is so easy to use. Yeah. You're just turning it on. And if you're somebody like me who, if you're making pancakes, are chasing it around the pan mm. or an egg or something and you need to flip it over, I love the fact that you have all of this room on the yeah. Blackstone. And I also like that every time we use it, it gets better. Right. It doesn't deteriorate. You're actually adding to like the slickness of the, of the pan top. Yeah, if you can use a frying pan, you can use a Blackstone. And I'm even going to say, if you can't use a frying yeah. pan, you can probably use a Blackstone. Because I can tell you my biggest complaint was I have expensive frying pans in the house and every one of them gotten ruined from people using forks and knives and spatulas. And you don't have to worry about any of that on a Blackstone. No. It's ridiculously easy. And like Rachel said, the longer you have it, the easier it gets. If I was going to add something to the purchase of that is get the, that dome thing. Mm -hmm. Get one of those dome things because that is really nice for cooking eggs and for cooking when you do cheese out mm -hmm. on there. And also Skillet for pizzas. cauliflower rice. Like there's so much to do with those pans. Uh, next yeah. one is from Lori. Hey, Lori. Lori said, Zip Fizz Experts. Is this product for energy, electrolytes, both, neither, something else? LOL, help and thanks. I love Zip Fizz. Fruit Punch is my favorite flavor. I really <laughs> pray that they don't discontinue that. I know they did discontinue it. I think Sam's is just not carrying it in our store anymore. <laughs> uh, okay, so what is Zip Fizz? It is kind of a combination of all that. It really is... I think marketed as an energy drink, kind of like, you know, um, what were those little ones? Five, hour. five hour energy drinks. That's kind of how it's marketed. But they do have a lot of electrolytes in there. I think there's a thousand milligrams or of, of um, potassium in each tube. So it definitely gives you a lot of electrolytes. It gives you a lot of potassium. It does give you a little bit of sodium. So it's good for that way. But it also gives you a lot of energy because it's got a ridiculous amount of vitamin B. And that's yeah. where you get the energy from it. So we do both like to have probably one a day, one every other day, and we mix it in with our other electrolytes. The reason we don't use it solely for electrolytes is because every tube does have carbs in it, usually between two to four, depending on the flavor. So we kind of do that for like an instant gratification, a little bit of energy. And then we add in either perfect keto electrolytes or Redmond electrolytes or the keto chow electrolytes. So right now I've got keto chow daily minerals in and my I've, coffee. I get the perfect keto. And we just mix all of that, everything all together and kind of get our electrolytes from everywhere. Uh, next one is from Adalia. Hey Adalia. She says, I just wanted to share something that is working well for me. I track in chronometer, but for the last two months on Mondays, I don't track. There is something really freeing about not tracking one day per week, and I find that I'm able to stay on plan and eat intuitively with success, which is increasing my confidence that I can trust myself to do what's best for me. I don't think I'm in a space to safely stop tracking, but I do enjoy the day off from it once per week. I think that's awesome. I think that is totally brilliant, and what a great way to start venturing into an area where maybe tracking isn't like, a total obsession because yeah. it can be challenging too. It could be challenging. It could be a pain. It could be something where you start going, gosh, I just don't want to live this way for the rest of my life. I'd rather just be fat. And believe me, I've gone through that, right? All of these emotional things, again, talking about emotion, going back in through my head being like, this is, a lot of I, work. I, I, this is just too much work. It's not worth it. I mean, it is worth it, but my mind would tell me in the it's moment. not worth it. 
And I like this whole way of just like adding in one day or two days a week because now you're like, okay, I'm tracking, but let me see, have I got it yet? And I know something that's even like yeah. Robert Keto Savage does is when he works with you, he eventually takes you to more of like intuitive eating, like seeing like your whole idea of, okay, now you kind of get the idea of how much food you should be eating based on your tracking. Now, can you do it without actually tracking? Well, and what I like too is maybe that's something that we think to ourselves, we'll never be able to get away from tracking. I will never be able to intuitively eat. And I like that you're stretching yourself one day at a time, giving yourself a safety net, but also working towards something that maybe you didn't think was possible. Right. It's not just getting off of medicine, it is fixing the relationship that we have with food. And sometimes we think to ourselves, we will never get it right. Right. But we will. It's one day at a time. And I think this is a great step. Yep. So we have one more and it is from Christopher. Hey, Christopher. Christopher said, on the way home from work, I stopped by a Chinese takeout place to pick up some food for my son. I haven't eaten there in like two years because there's just not many options for me there. The cashier asked me, are you on a diet? Oh, wow. I mentioned that I didn't come by as much anymore because I didn't eat the carbs and sugar. And she said, well, you just look so much thinner, which he does. He looks amazing. Amazing. I ate at that Chinese restaurant so much two years ago that they still remember me and how big I was. Wow. Story number two, we are still cleaning out our old house and I was sorting a bunch of old clothes yesterday and came across my old jeans. So tonight I put on my waist size 54 jeans and my 5XL shirt. Wow. I now wear a 34 inch waist now and my shirts are a large. Oh man. Well, my three year old daughter just came up to me and said, that's too big for you, daddy. That is awesome. You look amazing, Christopher. And if you have not watched his um, keto channel, Slap a Stick Keto, it is so good. In fact, he recently um, did a review of some black garlic that we need to purchase because well, it looks awesome. He's the reason we have our bacon recipe. He's so. an incredible cook. Yeah. So go check out his channel. I will leave a link for that down below. Uh, but that is going to be this week's Keto on the Couch. We thank everybody for watching. Again, let us know down in the comment section, what is your favorite movie from the 80s and 90s? And also, should we put together some kind of, you know, Keto cookbook? And Maybe. finally, I want to know, what is it you're looking for on Prime Day? Like the greatest day of the year. <laughs> Not Christmas. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, check out some of the other Keto on the Couches because there are 116 of them. Woo. And they're linked right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way, subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time, bye. bye.